correctly. Let's see. It's been a minute since I've been on a live stream, so bear with me if you're already here. Let's click on this, open a chat. All right, looks like we're live. Hopefully the audio's all set and whatnot. And if everything's good, are we live on Twitch? Boop -a deep I'm Trying to open up all the chats, although I don't know. Here we go, multi-stream chat. Stream chat read only, okay. There we go. chat box. All right, guys, we're going to get into it. We're making maps today. I feel like I'm a little invisible on screen. Now, nah, we'll see how I feel about it in the future, but for now, we'll just get started. Uh, I'm going to be making a variety of uh, battle maps, and we're going to see how that goes as we get into it here. It's gonna take a little bit for all this to load in. Um, I might have to turn some mods off and whatnot as we continue, but uh, hopefully we don't have to do that too soon. I wonder if it's because it's a green background that I'm fading in and out here. Clicking buttons. It's got to load in a whole bunch of stuff. All right, we're starting with the basic cave. Let's think, I think the first thing I'm going to build is we have a session coming up with a player who's going to be entering a keep. I have no idea if we'll need the map, but it's fine if we don't need the map because what's important here is that we get maps that we can use in the future as well. Because there is no... What do we got there? Icy Bison. Thanks for following, buddy. But there is no rule telling us that we need to make a particular map for a particular reason. We make maps for any future use. So let's start here. Oh, what do we want to start with color-wise? That's a weird taco, my dude. It is a weird taco. It's a little crazy taco, if I say so myself. We'll start with some marble flooring, and we're going to start building an entrance. So this is going to be essentially the inside of a Mott and Bailey at the end where the keep is, at, the, at the, the top center thing of it, surrounded by the palisades. And we're doing the inside, so we're going to start with a basic entrance here. We might change this color, I don't know. For now, it's just what we're going with. And this is what I assume is going to be the Great Hall. So this is a... a Four by four entrance isn't bad, if I say so myself. And we'd kind of open up here as we get into it to what would be the Great Hall of the Keep. Let's push through here like this. Open it up, and there we go. We should go by two by two at least. So we have our entrance. We want to make it clear that some of this is an entrance so we're gonna want to immediately put a door i think so let's go to our icons we have our windows we have our doors can increase the size of these doors what we're using by the way is ill ill winter's floor plan, plan generator i don't know how i feel about that door we could close this off, actually. It might be ideal with a wall. So we're going to do an edge. What color walls? Let's just go with regular stone walls. Eventually, we'll outline all of this once we clear it out. For now, we have, like, a simple cave. But here's our great hall. Each square is usually going to be represented by about 
uh, five feet. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So about 35 feet um, in length. Long is our great hall in one, two, three, four, five, six, and about 30 feet across. Not a bad size. This isn't an especially rich estate, so it's not like a magnificent great hall, but it's more of a, we're going to have like a dining room table in the middle. We'll put that down now. Some nice little dining room tables. Four chairs is a little light. Do we have anything better? We have a bridge. That's not going to work. Have all these beautiful icons. Wondercraft and Dungeoncraft? Yeah, there's a lot of tools out there. Illwinter's floor plan generator is um, a collection of their assets they use for their games. Uh, they have this game called Conquest of Elysium 4, and they're making a fifth one in Dominions. And They have uh, these tiles that I really enjoy. It, it's what I'm used to. Of course, every tool is valid, but we... Uh, we have to at some point choose. So I think what we're going to do here is our great hall is going to have like a feasting table. And I can imagine in my in my mind's eye that when the feast is happening here on this dining room floor, right, this great hall, they'll probably put in more tables like this and, and this if there's like a major feast. But, you know, what you're really looking to serve is probably like the Baron um, or the Count, depending on this place okay i am straight that's wonderful welcome to the youtube chat by the way uh crp okay let's put this on center here but i can imagine them maybe having a couple seats for guests in the family um, and maybe some men at arms that the the baron or baroness would join at the table with them I'm going to go back into our icons and find a chair to put at the end of the table. It's got to be nice and fancy. These are more like reading chairs. Backpacks. This looks nice. How do I get this under this? Can change Ooh, under walls. That might be right. I haven't used this in a minute. Let's see, will this place it under? Nope. Might forego the chair until I figure out those commands in the future again. Hmm. Okay, I'm overwalled, so we need to go underwalled. There we go. Maybe that'll work now? Nope. So it'll only go under the walls. Where else can I see? We could delete the tables and go back and place them. Right, pick up icon under cursor. Snap grid. Yeah, we'll just go back and redesign this a little bit. Put a chair there, it shouldn't be too hard. Get this table back to us. Rotate it. Make sure it's decently sized. That's a little, the chair's a little big, actually. I don't love it. We'll just do one of these chairs. Needs to be sized appropriately, though. And then there's also gonna be a chair at the end of the Great Hall for our noble lord. There we go. Okay, how do we get off snap to grid? G. Let's hit that G key. First we'll shift G. No. There we go. Oh, it's gonna rotate like this, huh? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I was clicking between it. So now we're off snap to grid. Now we're on it. There we go. Figuring out this program again. I haven't used it in a bit. Get it nice and level there. There we go. Now we're gonna go back on snap to grid, maybe? Yeah. And there we go, that should be enough seats for what I'm looking for here. And then we're gonna get a nice table at the end of the hall. Not table, big chair. Let's find ourselves, a big armchair could work. 
Is there a metal chair fitting for a lord? There we go here. We have a throne. You can put at the end here. Now this isn't like the Game of Thrones chair. This isn't the uh, Iron Throne. This is more of a basic. We need to fit just the regular amount of stuff on. There we go. All right, so we figured out some of the furniture. Now this is the first floor of the keep, so we're gonna wanna push through it and make a decent amount. If I can get into my colors here. My beautiful little colors. Here we go, get our marble floor. We will push out, I think, this direction for the kitchens, because obviously you're gonna need kitchens, but it's kind of like the side place, right? You're not thinking about the kitchens very often. And so they'd probably, given the times that this is set in, this is set in a feudal society, I'm thinking like, you know, they're not gonna have guests go into the kitchen very often. And so you're gonna probably find it to be less luxurious and these nice cobbled stone or marble floors, whatever you want to call it, likely would only be on for show. Because, you know, there's no one keeping the building up to code or going into your kitchen. So generally, this is going to be not as pretty, if I do say so myself. You can do a thick door, just a regular wooden door. Scoop this over here. We're going to go off grid again, just so I can get the placement I like. And there we go, we have a nice door. And so, during our campaign with my uh, fighter thief that I'm running in a solo campaign with him, we are gonna have these kitchens that he might go into. Who knows if we'll use it again, it's all subjective to what the player does, so I am willing to reuse these assets in the future. Uh, but we'll give it a little fireplace in here that acts as like a cook stove. There we go. And we're probably gonna wanna now take on some of the stone walls again and fill this out back here. There we go. Probably fill this out for now. Probably edit all this stone away later. What do I think of dark jokes? It depends on the joke, I'd say. We'll fix that later in post. We probably want a servant's exit around here. I'm not... Because they're going to have an exit where they can get out. It's a chair. Why is that a chair? Charred wood. Okay, not a chair. Um, let's do another door here. It's going to be like the exit. Will it pop over this? No, it won't. So we're gonna place over walls. Just give it a shift. There we go. That's it's a decent sized door. It's an exit so servants can enter in and out of our keep. Let's keep running around here. And I think we'll just put some kitchen stuff in there. They're gonna need a table probably to prepare food on. Give it a couple counters here. We'll go back to our grid for this, I think. Uh, no, I don't love that. We'll eyeball it as best we can. We're not making like the perfect, most wonderful, beautiful, illustrious thing here. We're making usable maps that we can uh, run in our D&D campaigns. Got a couple of that. What else might they have in a kitchen? Not a bookshelf. No chest. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Always interested in hearing it. Armor plates. Ooh, yeah, here we go. Not, we'll do barrels. They might have some barrels of food stuck in here. So they'd be like, yeah, this is also their storage. They probably have some outside, but they need easy access to this business here. There we go. Some nice little barrels full of food stuffs that they might need. And I think ooh, we could put some plates on our tables. I love that. Some little aesthetic 
Now, if you're if you're in a rush, you might not want to do this, but just making it a couple. I don't love that one. Making a couple plates here just to show that this is where they store their dishes. Let's see how it looks if we layer them. Try and make the. Yeah, that looks okay. So we have plates, there's fish. Put some cheese here and there. Probably a chair. Uh, when you're cooking, you might need a place to sit. So you'd have a couple chairs around here, maybe in this corner, where you can rest for a minute. Servants are, aren't on their feet all day, although they should be on their feet most of the day. And there's that. Okay. We'll move on to more flooring. Where's our marble floor? Do we want to change this to cobblestone? I think we do. Let's see how that looks, actually. Yeah, that fits a little better with our aesthetic. Let's switch this all around. But not the edge. As we build beautiful little floors that our noble ladies and lords can walk on. There we go. Cobbled stone. Much better. Let's build out here. Now that we've done that, we could decide on our next measure of action. I think, um, as far as this floor goes, we're going to have another door behind the Baron uh, leading to... Uh, this is... Maybe for Nahom's campaign, maybe, uh, which is our Fighter Thief campaign. Also, maybe just for general use is what we're using this for. Because, you know, there's no wrong answer for a map. We can also reuse them for future instances. But what this map is for, it is essentially a Baron or Count's Keep. So we're mapping it out. What this room is, is going to lead one into a couple different places. This is kind of an intersection room, I'm imagining. We're over here. We're going to have probably uh, access to the dungeons. I don't know if it'll be that big, but we're just mapping it out. And then access to the upstairs. I think this will just be a hallway. I'd actually like if this was also just a hallway. And in times of crisis, it's also a defensible position for the Baron. I do have complete maps. Let me go grab some and show you. I will show you guys right now some of my completed maps that I use for various different things. Swords and of men and timeless tabletop pictures. Let's go, let's do my action maps. All right, so this is, this is a country bumpkin house that we use for one campaign. I believe you guys can see that, yep. Um, and it was called Cletus's house, and Cletus uh, had a bunch of crossbowmen up on this roof. This is the entrance. This is a pretty basic one. Here is a room for a cult. You can see there's a gate here to the entrance of this weird kind of dungeon. Sleeping quarters, summoning room. Uh, this was a magic gemstone. Uh, we also had uh, some monsters that came out of here. A stone elephant just for decoration. Here is Ficklestein's Tavern. It's a tavern in a town of Mon Mill. And above is like all the seating. And they look down. Here are this crate. Um, I'd probably do better nowadays, but this crate was the stage where uh, the bards and wonderful people would perform for everyone. Up here, there was seating where the people could look down and watch. Um, here, they'd be serving flapjacks and all manner of things. This is just a basic floor. It's empty. Uh, here's a cobalt encampment. Uh, you can see the palisades on each side. They've built strategically across the river with only a bridge entrance. Can you have Ficklestein's map? Uh, sure, I can give it to you. It's in your server. You've been at the cobalt one. I am unsure. I sometimes reuse these. Then we have a map of Independence Pass, which is a major spot on my map where many travelers have tried. I think you've used this map, actually, where many travelers have tried to make it through. You met a snake. And it fucked us up. Hmm. 
Here, um, I probably would have done a better job on this one, but this is like an uh, kind of like Mayan style temple that leads up. Uh, this was more for practical, pra oops, that was more for practical use. Um, the reason I had this is because there was a sacrifice being had up here. Um, God, I don't remember the name of the campaign, but it was a campaign I run with Nahom and some of our old friends. Um, and they were trying to sacrifice an item to summon a, a magic sword, which they did summon. Then uh, I have some player home designs I worked on. Uh, this was actually for one of your campaigns, uh, Nell, where I was uh, rewarding you guys with a house. I think if you'll remember, maybe this is one of them. Here's a potential siege map. You can see a siege tower, uh, palisade things here. This one never made it into the campaign. My players made very different decisions on what they wanted to do with their time. Which, you know, it's, it happens. Oh god, this is this is inside the siege map, um, the keep. This is totally destroyed in my world now, but I guess I could always reuse it. Um, you can see up here is a small throne, an entrance, a spiral staircase. Uh, there is a whole bunch to this keep. There were monsters in these things too when I used it, um, but it, it's a pretty cool keep. Um, I only had this around just for aesthetic purposes. I never plan on a battle happening here, but the bottom part was the important part. Classic RuneScape? I've actually only played RuneScape maybe twice. My cousin Marcel really enjoyed the game, but I uh, I was never into it. He became a frog prince or something. He became cursed with a frog prince disease. And uh, that's, that's all I remember. But uh, here there was like some undead creatures, some weird cows and things, and... Over here, there was a giant slug, if my memory serves me correctly, and you can go further down. Eventually, this is where um, this this map leads down over here, um, once they got past a bunch of Minotaur Guardians, towards uh, Belen Thorax, which is an, a dragon in my uh, campaign setting over on the continent of Sonus, not Idmar, on the opposite side of my world, where a dragon rules the land because players released him, uh, cause th over here there was like a, there was like an altar with a sword in it and they pulled out the sword and they let free a dragon. This is just a sewer. Some of this is just me playing around. Like if I ever need two boats, uh, this is what I'd use. <laughs> uh, cause it's just what was available to me, but there's a long ship and obviously just a boat with some ballista. I, I actually have some very strong opinions that boats in medieval fantasy should usually only have ballista on them instead of cannons. If you're playing specifically a pirate setting, maybe you do cannons, but still, ballistas uh, much better and easier to deal with. Also, players don't like it when you sink them in the water all of a sudden. Here's the entrance to that temple. Uh, it's a uh, this is the Skull Island, is what we called it. Some cool stuff going on there. Oh, geez, what was this? This this had to do with the temple, but I don't remember why there's three giant like wicker thrones. Can't recall. I remember this, though. You like this? I'm glad you like it now. This this map, um, you want a Wicker Throne? It's always possible. You're in a campaign. You could potentially have one. This one, though. Oh, I remember exactly what happened in this hallway. This was the first hallway where I had a player eat someone. Um, we had an ogre, and of course, og ogres are man-eaters, and... Our ogre muck decided he wanted to eat uh, a prisoner in this in this dungeon that they captured. This is still in the same temple. Uh, you can see I reused assets a little bit over here, but for different purposes. Um, there was ice imps over here. Those caused the party all manner of uh, trouble. This is the hot tub of enchantment, where if you enter the hot tub and you fail your saving throw, you never want to leave the hot tub. And the party just destroyed the hot tub. That was their solution to get their friend out of it, who got charmed by it, was to smash the hot tub until it got destroyed. Your more recent maps are more aesthetic? Very true. I, uh, put different amounts of works. Thank you. I hope I have. You'll see different levels of, uh, expertise, depending on how good or bad I'm doing at the time. Here's a basic tavern. Not too troublesome. Um, I think it makes sense. Uh, I I couldn't... I think I tried to make this an upstairs on the same map, and this is what I was trying to express with this ladder. 
This one is nice. I, I can't tell if you're talking about the tavern or not, but I like the tavern. The tavern is fun. It kind of leads up here. Yeah. I like this one, actually, a lot. Um, it's just a basic tavern, but, you know, you, you'll sometimes make a basic tavern, and you're like, this looks homely, it looks comfortable, it looks lovely, it looks like I could just hear the ambience of tavern music playing in the background as we sat here. I think it's nice. I like it. But we'll move on. This is this is supposed to be a mill. I believe you were actually on this map. I didn't have much to use here. This looks I I can't tell if this looks right. But this was a this was the wheel, this little weird bridge thing. These are siege towers <laughs> that I used as outlooks. Yes, you went down the river. You broke the wheel. Like Daenerys Targaryen, you set out to broke the wheel and you broke the wheel. God, what is this? Oh, this was an ogre map. Um, here's his mushroom farm. This is just a basic ogre, little weird hut. Gives you nightmares of Claptrap. Oh my goodness. This is an ugly cave. I don't like this one. This is just this is just like I needed a map. This is a hallway. This is an end. Again, you can see the same skull. There's you know I have to reuse assets at some point, but. There's a wicker throne again, skulls. <laughs> this was the most laziest top surface map I ever had. But I needed it because I wanted to make very clear that this was a coffin. This thing right here. Um, and that was the entrance to the to the to the keep. This goes up. I don't know how well I showed that that goes up, but some early stuff. I don't know what the hell this is, why it's saved on my computer. Here's one of my one of my interesting ones. Um, right here is where they drop down um, into this map. This is underground in a keep. Uh, you can see there's bodies over here. You can see a bunch of weird stuff going on. I love this one. In this in this weird orb was a giant octopus that uh, was like an extra dimensional traveler, and the party released it. Um, Never hearing it from it again, but it was a, a pretty interesting one. Uh, over here, there's weird gl glowing lights. There's weird altars. There was a bunch of fish people down here, and they could see in these vats the fish people were turning other p humans into fish people, ah, which was just, uh, you know, a little copied from H.P. Lovecraft, but I loved it. Oh, God, I love this room. And the room of bodies where the people didn't work out and all manner of business. Uh, some of it I don't remember. I don't remember what this room was for think this was an exit like this was like supposed to be a sewer grate ah the underground hp racist craft very true very very true this was um an underground tavern and fighting pit over here is the fighting pit um i didn't have a really good way to illustrate this at the time but i just put a cage up and put people around it so with people around it it made more sense and two fighters that look like pit fighters in the middle over here is where the big boss stays, and they have all their gear. Fireplace, two couches, and all this business. Storage. I actually never got to use this. Um, players took a different option than this quest, and this map went into the garbage, essentially. Not garbage, you know. You can always reuse your maps. But I didn't, I didn't get to use it, and there was a bunch of creatures in here in cages. Yeah, these are cages. Yes, you're right. These are for the pit fighters. They would uh, kidnap people was the quest, and... The whole party was supposed to go down and free these people from their cages, free all these pit fighters, and let them go. Over here is obviously the gambling and the drinking. But this is an this is an older map I never got to use. I think this is a good map. I like this one, um, but never got to use it. <laughs> I use this one. Uh, here is where uh, Emmanuel uh, Lafleur met his end. You would save them as a noble druid. I hope you would. I don't know how I feel about this one, but I do love the quest that happened here. Uh, Emmanuel Archibald Lef Archibald Emmanuel Lafleur something died here to an ogre in this room. There was an ogre and he faced off and they killed each other in the same same round. It was a pretty thematic thing. The people on the surface above this sewer uh, built Emmanuel a statue. Here's a tree. But those are my old maps. It's pretty cool stuff. I like it. 
Okay, we'll get back to this one. No, it says Budweiser. It's a beer shirt. I don't wear Supreme clothing. I am not Supreme. Oh, I, somehow I feel like it's worse that it's that. Let me... Okay. oop a doop doo Okay. Next. What were we doing here? Got distracted. Well, I know one. I want to put a staircase. I'm glad you'll watch me while you work. I appreciate that. We're going to go for some upwards stairs. In this direction. We'll fix the wall later. I don't love how big those stairs are. It feels... Not super proportional. I kind of do. We have spirals. I love spiral staircases. That's one thing about me. Spiral staircases are my best friend. If I can find them in my whole collection of tile stuff. See, we have a whole endless amount. We're gonna lag as we go down. There's just so much stuff to load. Where are my? Sp I know there's spiral staircases in here. One thing I don't love about this mapping tool is there's not a good way to search for things. Buckets. Hmm. Where am I spite? Did I delete them? I have a bunch of mods for this installed and I never... I'm like two seconds away from giving up on my spiral staircases, and I hate to do it, but... Rivers and water, sailing ship, grass, town, roadside... It's clutter... Mansion furniture... I like these curtains. Yeah, I guess we don't have any spiral staircases right now. I guess we're gonna have to go with regular, ew, icky staircases. We'll have to figure out what mod pack I had on to install the staircases, but. Uh, let's just do some basic upwards bound stairs. There we go. And here we go. We'll need downward stairs for the other ones. You think those stairs look nice? I'll be honest, I love spiral, but we'll stick with it. One thing we do want to do is... So, nobility would definitely have a large, like, metal or stone door in this kind of section. Because this is the difference between getting murdered. Fits with the color scheme, I suppose. But this big metal-bound door would keep our barren safe in times of crisis you want that big metal door that's hard to punch through so that uh, if you have to make a quick escape you will let's do some stone pillars in the great hall I love that stone pillar let's do let's do this one just do one here do one over here try and make them even as possible Do one on each corner, just symbolizing that this is held up by something. Do a pillar here. And this over here is going to act simultaneously as two different things. See, I don't want... I need downward stairs. Where's my downwards? Stairs. These are wooden, though. I don't love the color. I could always go change it in Photoshop, but I know if I say I'm going to do that, I'm not going to do it. Because that's going to require me to go to a whole different thing. Mess with stuff. For now, we'll use this, I believe. I'm a little grumpy about it. I don't know how much this looks like the staircase is going down, either. I wonder if I turn this. Might give the illusion. No, it's definitely 
Maybe if I place it under the wall. That looks a little... That looks kind of like it's going down, and it's the opposite of this. It should go light to dark. Okay, so maybe like this. <laughs> we'll, we'll stick with it for now. And then we're gonna do... I'm going to stop with our icons for a second, because I think I know what I want to do here. This is going to be the entrance to the dungeons going downwards. Other than that, we're going to get back to our cobbled stone. Just a small hallway into what is the treasury and armory, essentially. Although, I think this is better served as our armory up here, just as like a makeshift hallway slash armory into the dungeons. Kind of the place you're never expecting guests. We'll fix all this... Uh, editing errors in a little bit. Having an eye twitch. But we'll put our treasury over here. What do we want to put in the treasury? Where's our gold? Here we go. We don't want piles of gold. This isn't a dragon hoard. Let's get some basic chests. Just plop this down right about here. Let's get it a little smaller. This isn't; these aren't giant, but just give a couple chests for the treasury. Let's go with three chests over here. Ooh, that's very uneven. Give it just about the same amount of spacing. Anything else we'd like to put in a treasury here? Not a golden anchor. That doesn't seem to fit. It's artwork. Will probably not sit very nicely. Let's grab a table. Ooh, crates, yes. Crates full of indiscriminate wealth that we are never sure what's in them, but uh, they sit here as well. Being kind of a mystery as you enter the room. There could be a cockatrice, which is a petrifying little chicken-type creature in one of these, or there could be uh, maybe just some basic tools and loot that they don't want the servants to steal. Is this a paranoid lord, or is he accepting of his servants? Does he lock them in the dungeons consistently as punishment? Booby trap. Maybe one of them is a false, yes, maybe one of them is a false uh, uh, crate that if is opened will just like shoot out uh, any manner of traps. A bomb, an explosive? That would be an expensive trap. But it would stop thieves. I suppose it uh, changes depending on how uh, paranoid our liege lord here is. BTFO them? Yes. Very much so. Okay, what else? I think that's good for our treasury. We'll place a big old thick wooden door. Oh, that looks ugly. We'll just do regular, regular wooden door. That's good enough. Um, we'll fix that later, but do double doors. Stone door? Mm, would they really afford... Here's what we'll do. Let's see here. We can do a uh, wooden door. Because you don't... The thing is, you don't want to reveal that all your treasure's down here and... That stone door is like, okay, I know where the treasure is. Instead, we'll have a wood outside door, and then they'd have to get through, like, the basic lock on this to get to the big, thick, reinforced door for the treasury. I like that. Yeah, there we go. Do we have any weapon racks? You know what? These would be nice. Let's, let's see how these curtains look here and there. Trying to get this behind our chair. God, I need to figure out. Set icon color filter. Oh, so we can change the color on these. Ooh. Okay, we might redo our... Eh, we'll stick with that for now. I'm trying to remember how to use some of this. Place over walls. Don't want either of those. How do I place it under... To 
put icon under cursor. I guess I just have to layer it correctly, otherwise we're in trouble. It's not like Photoshop where I can fix the layering, but uh, we'll live with it. Put some curtains. Oh, that doesn't look good. Maybe do it above. That's a little more clear what that is. There we go. We'll actually do it. Just some nice curtains hanging off the walls. Hopefully this looks all right. These will be the royal banners that they have here. I don't love that. Maybe just in the back. But the banners wouldn't be behind pillars. Our cute little banners. Let's do it. Let's, put, let's just let's have one solid one. Is there any other? Clutters and rocks and all manner of things. Ooh, definitely need a study room with a bookshelf. I'm going back and forth on this. We'll do one curtain there just for the Lord's colors in the in the keep. Which now are presumably red, which is okay. Can live with some red colors. Got to place some doors here, and then we'll start finishing up parts of this map we haven't dealt with. This is just a regular wooden door, nothing too special there. The door that leads to the dungeons isn't going to be fancy, because they already have the stone door on the outside if they need it. Let's make sure that it fits. Okay, there you go. There you go. It's a little tilted, but that's okay. We're going to start fixing what color the rest of these walls and things are. How do I feel about that? That looks fine. This is the part of our map players don't see often, so we're not as worried about what this looks like in particular. And we can start getting to work on the second floor of this keep. So we just run out here, putting our cobbled stone. We're going to fix some of the edges on the walls, too, and maybe change some of this around, but I just want it as a baseline. Snake? Do you feel snaked? Or is it because I'm making uh, snakes with this? Feels almost sometimes like I'm playing that, what is it, caterpillar game? No, it's like worm, a worm game? Pog champ. See, I'm so un-emoji illiterate. I just have no idea. Boop, boop, boop. Place all this business around here. Shh, boomer? You know I am not a boomer. I have the spirit of an old soul, okay? That's all. Shaking your head? Okay, look. I am who I am. I'll make you some green eggs and ham, said Sam I am. Okay, let's do some edging. Oh, that was not... Don't clip that. Don't clip that. <laughs> Look, it's called the edge tool, okay? That's all I gotta say. Oh, God. Okay, now we need to fix that. Where's our wooden floor? There we go. But we're refining these walls, making sure they look all nice and fancy. Well, from time to time, we're gonna mess up here, and it's gonna look bad. Oh, God, we, we clipped over our doors. We'll fix that in a second. Just trying to refine these so they look like fine walls rather than they look like, uh, there we go. Like they were placed here in desperation. As you can see, our tool for it isn't perfect. We're going to have to refine this. Maybe move some of our doors. That's okay. Yeah, we'll definitely have to move some of our doors now. All right. This hallway got very thin. 
I don't love how thin that hallway is. Although this is more defensible. That's the war. It's more defensible. Skinny legend. Skinny little walls. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's going to look nice on some of these. Oops. Oh, dear. The misclicks are real. Okay, treasury, I'm not too worried about making the hallway tighter. That just seems to make sense to me. Oh, okay. See, this tool will sometimes just outcrop if you if you kind of mess your hand up a little bit. And I am not a artist of beauty. I'm an artist of practicality, is what I'll say. Let's do some of our cobblestone floor. Fix some of this up. Is that not the right? There we go. Don't want to take away from our walls. I actually, I don't love how tight all these hallways got, so we'll... See, now, if I repave over it with cobblestone, it fixes some of these issues. Oh, but then it made it... God, my lord. We also went over our chest. This will just have to be a little rougher. We carve it out here. There we go. Okay, it looks better now. Might need to fix that door. There we Okay. Oh, God, it puts like a hole there. I don't want to do some editing. This hallway's just way too tight. I can't abide by that tight a hallway. Now it's much bigger. There we go. Okay. Some weird clipping going on. We'll just do this one it's flat like that. Have to move some of our objects around, but that's all right. Make beautiful little maps here. We'll stick with that. I'm unconcerned. Let's fix all of our doors now. Delete, 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 delete. All the doors need fixing. So first, these doors. There we go, nice wooden doors for the entrance. That looks fine. Skip over here. Actually, we'll put the door here since this is already kind of messed up. There we go. Now we probably want two doors just because the servants are gonna need to be isolated from the Great Hall. As any good Leech Lord knows, the servants need to be uh, heard, not seen? No, that's not right. Seen, not heard. Could put it under. Lord. Ooh. Icky. Seen and not heard, yes. I am using Illwinter Floor Plan Generator. It is, yeah, it's um, it's from uh, a company that makes these uh, 4X strategy games, and they've kind of repackaged a lot of their assets that they use for their stuff into this floor plan generator. I like it quite a bit. Well, that's going to go under the wall. Yeah. But I'm making this map for my campaign where one of the players is about to infiltrate a keep, most likely. So we might need a map. I'm feeling good about the first floor. It's not too shabby. Um... We have our great hall, we have the entrance, a couple pillars. Looks like we accidentally deleted. We need to put a pillar back over here. 
There we go. But we have our Great Hall. Maybe some sconces? Let's see if we have sconces. We have bottles. Curtains. Oh, that's a good... Just made me think. We might want to put some windows in, right? Probably not many, given this is a feudal society and windows are very expensive. But we'll do a couple here. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Torches or windows. Definitely a good idea. Now, we could treat this as there's no wall behind it. But do we... That's supposed to be fortified. Probably windows in here. And two windows here. And then, let's see here. Let's find ourselves some natural lighting if we have any. Campfires... Furnitures, clutter cups. We have campfires. Light lit candle. Okay, that's kind of what we're looking for. Can we make this look like a sconce? Ooh, we could we could do some lit candles on the table. There we go. Anything else we want to put here? More candles that look kind of funny. I need to check the mod packs for this again, because I deleted a bunch of stuff because we had way too much. Now I feel like we have way too little. There's bandit camps and treasure. No. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm being an evil DM and making homebrew monsters continues to look up SCP files. It's always very fun to uh, shock your players with a new homebrew monster. Why is this clipping through me now? My uh, thing is clipping. I've been thinking of all manner of uh, homebrew monsters, though, whether it be weird SCP stuff, grapple-based. Let's hear about it. How is it grapple-based? Does it have, like, many appendages? Is it, like, a astral horror type thing with, like, long, kind of lanky dark tentacles? That'd be cool. Like, stuff like that. Some Lovecraftian. Oh, yeah. Uh, post the link. We'll see if it works. <laughs> I'm not up on all the Twitch stuff. Speaking of which, I need to... Now you'll have to teach me some of this. Much more on the YouTubes. This should lead to less clipping. Let's get rid of the smoothness. Eh, there's a little bit of the green screen in the background. I don't want to... It's good enough for now. All this Twitch stuff. Ooh. Alright, so this is what I'm being shown. I like it. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out... Is this a water monster? It can use its other two attacks unless it's grappling something. It's a medium dragon. Five to hit, two melee attacks. I dig it. Does it... Looks like a Hydra? I like the aesthetics a lot, with the fins on the face. These nasty teeth. That tongue freaks me out. I feel like that tongue is going places that a player never wants it to. <laughs> oh, God. Cool monster. 
Never, yes. Oh, come on, no. None of that business. Ah. Now it is uh, 30, it climbs 30 feet. Is it gonna like bite someone and, and like scale up the walls? Is that something it might do? That would be cool. I would like that. Drop down on someone? Yeah, I like that idea. Just surprising them, kind of like just grabbing into their neck. Just trying to maybe maybe it wraps itself around a tree, it is my imagination, and then kind of tangles down, grabs the neck of its victim, and <laughs> grabs him back up. I'm trying to figure out this video thing, this chroma key thing. What is this? So you want to fuck a fictional creature. Can I put this on stream? I think so. <laughs> Does it have, can it plop? Oh dear God. It's a little, a little disturbing. I just realized my chilling thing isn't showing. Is it? Wrong one? It's the wrong test? Let me get this picture I'm supposed to have on the stream. Where's my overlay? Boop. There we go. We're chilling. I like that monster, though. It's pretty cool. I don't think it passes that test for me. Oh, we have more links. Does it have human intelligence or greater? Well, it has five int, so most humans are gonna be smarter than five int. Minus three on its checks too, so that, no, I, I don't think so. I think we're checking off the box. Can otherwise communicate with language? Draconic, it has draconic language. I think this is a mature version of it, so uh, I think this doesn't pass the test on intelligence. I think that's where we, we find ourselves lacking here. Hmm. Well, we failed your test. Yes, you cannot fuck it. Is two less than a troll? Very true. Is is 5th edition 3 intelligence's uh, animal? I haven't... Uh... Read up. I know in second edition it's three intelligences, uh, animal intelligence, but, uh, you shouldn't fuck a troll? I don't know about that. That's really debatable. Let us, so I'm gonna save this. Make sure we're saving. No, okay, hold on. Sorry, I gotta pull it off screen for a second. You guys can look at my wonderful darkness as I turn off my uh, desktop. <laughs> true. Very true, Darkstar. Who knows if you're topping or bottoming with the troll. Export slash print. Paint program. Here we go. And now how I save it is I locate it on disk. Then we rename it and shove it into my downloads for labor. So uh, keep floor one. Uh, what is the place this is called? Let's pull up my map. So this keep. It's going to be. I run them on roll 20. This is my uh, homebrew map here of Idmar. 
this continent here, and then the surrounding islands are all called Inmar. Um, the keep itself, if we zoom in and start getting things seen, is an Orinstead, so that's what we're going to name it. Yes, hexes. I, I used to have it squared and tiled, and then I was like, as soon as World 20, um, I noticed that they had hexes on here, I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Makes my life so much easier. Hey, things are going good, Enforcer. Going real good. Doing Dungeons and Dragons, doing a whole bunch of projects. On my YouTube, I do old spell descriptions. The most recent one was Blood Lightning, which is a pretty fun uh, second edition spell. Those are short videos, but uh, they're cool. Or instead. Okay, so the first floor of Orinstead is done. 5e game with Pathfinder, 1e's King map. Hexes, the party has to clear of dangers. Yeah, hexes work really well for knowing what monsters are where and all that, uh, all that business. I think I generally prefer it. Um, I use my tables in general regions, though. At work, attempting to make a new character. What kind of character are you making? I'm curious. The only time I've ever... I've been involved in one Pathfinder game. In most Pathfinder games, I've seen run with hex systems. Which is probably the best idea. It really keeps players understanding where they're going. I work out my filter stuff. I just can't get this chroma key down correctly. Oh yeah, for when you go to like actual maps, squares are like the tactical maps, squares are a lot better. Let's fix this. Try not to lose my eyes in this. Well, what, what, uh, a couple concepts I've been thinking of, and some of these are ridiculous and hard to run. Well, I want to hear Darkstar's idea, though. Let's hear Darkstar's. Mine is, mine is dumb and silly. It's a centaur chariot when you, when you have another player ride on your, uh, your chariot, although you need a strong character, so you'd have, like, a, a chariot... And then you'd have a centaur pulling it, and then you'd have like a small, maybe halfling or gnome shooting uh, a bow on the other side. Gourmand. Let's look at that. Uh, I assume this has something to do with food. Prepare exotic dishes. Oh, good. Halfling, master chef, folk hero background, chef feet. Later on pick up gourmand feet afterward. Remember the chef feet, just get gourmand. This is the gourmand feet, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Excuse me. You have a mastery. Yeah. Increase your constitution. You gain a proficiency with cooking utensils. I double your proficiency. And they are adventuring family for some reason. If you go with the chef idea, you could be a wandering chef going from town to town making your money adventuring. Maybe you're a bad chef. Maybe you're a bad gourmand and you make really bad food. And so you have to supplement your artistic um, attempts at being a chef with... <laughs> with fighting um, monsters and adventuring. You could also do... Um, hmm. You could do like a traveling merchant. Your father was like a traveling merchant and he needed to have someone to protect him. 
and maybe you were trained under the uh under like a mercenary and that's like your actual father where your father was like always busy with business as you traveled on the road doing merchanting stuff but his like bodyguard was the person who really raised you that could be an interesting character concept as i continue to try and fix this filter yes kiyosan's dm welcome corlix I do DM for Kiyosan, the Australian politics streamer. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you saying that. As I disappear and try and figure out a green screen. I may be a good DM, but I'm bad with technology, generally. Kind of like the character here has their own family. Hmm. Okay. Well, I you just think of motivations for why he's helping his family, I suppose. Maybe you need uh, their respect. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, the Mafia will sometimes call itself the family. This DM I really like to watch, Koibu, he does uh, homebrew second edition campaigns. All of his Mafia um, can, people in his campaign are called the family. Let's do a new dungeon. We're going to do the same since we're just doing the top layer of this place. I'm actually going to open this while I do it just for reference. This one we finished... Uh, yes, you can roll them down the line. The thing with second edition is there's so many optional rules. It's usually 3d6. You can do four. Um, there's so many optional rules. Every 2e game is going to be different. Second edition is either really, really terrible or really, really good, depending on the optional rules you're playing with and the skill of the DM to work with them. Um, there's stuff like Thacko that if you if you run at new players without explaining it or converting it to, to 5e and later standards of rolling, it'll confuse the hell out of people, even though it's to hit armor class zero is a, just a whole conversation. I might make a video on Thacko soon. I think it could be useful um, to kind of not scare people away from older editions of D&D, like second edition, to show how some of the rules do make sense. They're just convoluted in explanation is one of the big issues with second edition. Although, I will say, what 2nd Edition does have... I don't know why I'm cobblestoning here. Well, actually, cobblestone it all. Just to have a floor base. 2nd Edition has the best magic system. Um, what modules are my favorite? Jeez, that's a tough one. Uh, my favorite module um, is probably going to have to be stuff centered around Dragonlance, but that's just because I love like, romance, romance fantasy. Um, Dragonlance, if you don't know, it's a series of books uh, with a lot of different authors. Usually Margaret Wess is the author of them, though, in the, like, mainstay series of it. But the books are based on a group's D&D campaign, the three main books that uh, started the series. Although uh, they eventually outpace their D&D campaign and become much more of an epic fantasy kind of thing. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of series about them. And that setting is cool. It's probably my favorite module. I usually run games in my own homebrew stuff, though. Um, other than that, probably Dark Sun, I think, in concept is really cool, where I like to read about it, but I'd never run a game in that. I, I could run a game in Dragonlance. I'd have the ability to do that, at least. I wouldn't be able to run one in Dark Sun. It scares me too much. Yeah, they have uh, these, like, uh, God, these... It's been a while since I, I really went into deep, but they have, like, the Scepter of... Let me find it. I have old books with Dark Sun information. Just picked up the DMG for a second. Oh...
I show you something that looks great but sucks to actually play for, uh, yeah, sure. You can show me some Magic the Gathering stuff. I'd love to see it. Scepter, is it Scepter of the Priest Kings? I'm trying to find it. I'm looking in the S's. Scepter of the Sorcerer Kings, yeah. And this is based off the Dark Sun setting, I believe. Oh no, this is a Forgotten Realms item. Ignore me. Although this could totally work for Dark Sun, but... It was essentially a scepter that made uh, the gods leave the world one god a week, is the scepter's power. Um, and it's like a really rare artifact, I think it's really cool. Evolving the Wild. So we have a module here. Look at this glorious card, it's neat to collect, but... Sucks because it doesn't match the rest of the lands. I like the Planescape setting. Planescape is cool. Again, a really hard to run one. I've had a DM try to run Planescape, and it's just, it's a tough, tough thing to do. So let's open this. Sacrifice, Evolving Wild, search your library for basic land card, put it into the battlefield and trap and shuffle. I like the art on this. That looks really cool. Uh, this feels almost, almost planescape -y to me a little bit with the, with like the floating islands here. Yeah, I, I do like the art style especially. It does feel like old edition D&D art. Which is really cool if you look at it. Um, I don't know how much I can show you guys over this, but, uh. Ah, uh, here we go. Skills and Powers has some of the cooler art in D&D. &D. Like, look at this wacky shit. Okay. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. So here we have a minotaur balancing on a tightrope, right? With a looks to be a lizard man talking to a human with some sort of bird next to him. I would look at uh, the site Purple Worm, and there's also PDFs online you can buy. I definitely think the PDFs are an easier way to get into second edition. Although, I think if you can start getting into it, just buy the books, because the books are really cool too. Although, like, the Necromancer's Handbook and a bunch of supplemental stuff is really expensive. Because it's rare, and it's old. Especially since I'm just doing one, I don't have the books, nor do I have to find all of it. Usually I look on eBay and Amazon. Amazon recently has been a total flop. I don't know what they did, but all of a sudden all the second edition books disappeared off Amazon. eBay will generally have them, though. Well, just a, if you're in audio-only mode, just imagine the Minotaur on a tightrope with a lizard man and a human talking below. My friend was out and about, ended up getting all the rulebooks for Tui at a garage sale for 60 bucks. Oh man, I'm I'm too jealous to think about that, okay? <laughs> oh my word. Is it blue and yellow one? There's a couple different, that's the thing. And there's, there's different uh, misprints for the DMG stuff. So there's a couple different ones. This is one of the DMGs. Um, I know you can't see it, but it's got like a dragon on the cover. Uh, it says Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2E. Um, yeah, it's got blue and yellow, but there's other ones too. And there's weird different versions of the player's handbook. And then they've recently released uh, what I call the greens. And I have the green DMG. Thanks for following, man. Appreciate it as soon as your name pops up. Enforcer Hound, thanks for following, buddy. But uh, there's these green books, which generally will have um, what looks to be a lich or a white, a tree, a, a treekin, and a beholder on the cover, which these are newer. Um, if you can get your hand on one of these, these are usually... Um, oh, another follower. Thanks, buddy. I'll say your name in a second. But the, the green books are generally updated and save some of the old problems. Thanks for following, Darkstar. I appreciate it, buddy. The Spirit of Wink. Ah, let me look. Uh, let's see here. Whispers. Yes, I did get some. Click on it. 
Yeah, that's that's the one. That is the one I have actually. That's not a bad one. Um, I can't remember. One of the players' handbooks has some major issues with typos and excluding rules, which I have that one. So, when my players get their hands on the site Purple Worm, which has all the books on it, um, I'm not sure how scrupulous that is, but it has it has like information on all the books and things like that and a weird. Here, let me post it in the chat. This site right here. But that has a bunch of the rules and things. Um, but there's inconsistencies between that and some of the players' handbooks. It's a little weird, but we work with what we have. If I remember, aren't a lot of iconic NPCs for D&D just characters played by the original devs? Like, uh, more to draw. I can't pronounce it, but was Gary Gygax's character? Yes. And you'll see, I'll pull up this site. This site is by a DM named Koibu, who does Twitch stuff and runs campaigns. But a lot of the spells on stuff like this, if we go to, uh, where's Big B's? Uh, I'm gonna have trouble finding it now, aren't I? Oh, why am I in Conjuration? I should be in Alteration. Big. Here we go. Like, Big B's hand, you can see little versions of it. What? Why can't I find Bigby's hand? We'll go to all spells and I'll find it there. Oh, there is no all spells. I'm sure Alteration has access to it. Big B. Apparently not. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Big B's interposing hand and things like that. Bonjour! Welcome, Albert. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Yeah, but a whole bunch of them are. There's, uh... There's the disc spell. Where's that at? There's Nahal... <laughs> Nahal's Dweckless Doemer with Wild Mages. What are some good books for older edition spells? Um, I have behind me what is called the Tome of Magic, I believe. That one has some spells, although, um... If you want to get crazy, and this is for the this is for the most meticulous and wild person. Ah, oh, needs some noise while you finish your character. Welcome to the chat. This 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 old old tome is a wild one. Let me uh, find it here in my archive. If you just want to like nerd out over spells, get into it. There's the Wizard Spell Compendiums. There's volumes 1 through 4. There's also Priest volumes 1 through 3. I don't know where you'd buy these books physically, but you can get PDFs of them online. And what they do is list every second edition spell that has ever been conceived in Dragon's Magazine, in the different modules, in any regular part of the, uh, the the handbooks and put them all together in alphabetical order, which is insane. Um, but if you just want some intros to cool, some cool spells, I'll post my YouTube channel in the chat. What I have on my YouTube channel is I've been doing shorts that cover these spells. Yeah, I'll whisper them to you. Let me shoot them. I can't whisper you to links to the books. I don't have them on hand. Here, let me... I'll find those too. I'll send both. Wizard Spell Compendium. I'll just give you the Amazon link. I don't suggest buying them off Amazon. I suggest buying PDFs. But uh, here's the link to the YouTube channel. I cover some of the spells on there, some of these older spells that I find interesting. And there's to the com first Compendium. Also going to put the Compendium link in the chat. But there you guys go. I find these things very, very cool. Okay, let's get back to mapping for a second. Although I'm probably going to get distracted by a question, which is good. A good thing. I love that you guys are here. Thanks for being here, by the way. Heard of an orange and yellow purple dragon. The orange, yellow, and purple. Um, I know Amethyst. Amethyst is like a purplish dragon. Like, uh, let me find it. Although I believe you're talking about something different. 
these cool amethyst dragons here. Look at that. Oh, I love the amethyst dragon. They got some cool lore behind them. I can't remember if they're the thinkers. Jack T. Ripper, Hexblade, Warlock, and Rogue. So is that a multi-class? I find that very intriguing. Let me start here. So we have a staircase going over here. I'm not going to worry too much about it being one for one. I have his line art almost and his character sheet done. Is he, uh, what, what alignment is, uh, Jack T. Ripper? <laughs> I'm imagining evil, but I don't want to presume with that. Let's see. They were Dragon Magazine, 248, uh, page 28. I'll look them up. Conversion is sometimes a little difficult. Chaotic, <laughs> stupid, evil, okay. Hey, chaotic evil can be fine as long as we... Uh, Think of our parties that we're playing with. 248. Let's look at this. Purple dragon. Oh, we got yellow first. Salt. Assault dragon. <laughs> oh boy. A salty dragon, huh? Torment of all creatures, especially those of good alignment blend in with the sand so they're like a kind of like a salt sandish colored dragon that can hide under big stuff like that i would like to see dr ripper i'll pull him up on stream if it's okay with you too scales appear almost crystalline here's what we're looking at by the way for our salt dragon let me get my clipping tool out here's the yellow dragon this guy looks devious Definitely devious. It's just a reskin. Uh, current dragon, I don't want to. It doesn't feel like good homage, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get you. A doctor character? That's definitely doable in one of our campaigns now. Doctor characters are fun. Top of my head are chromatic, 5e, and gems. Yeah, the gem dragons. Let's hear your character concept. I love orange. Let's look at the orange one. Oh my lord. I'm having trouble seeing this guy. This guy is wild. Okay, this is the orange dragon we're looking at. What do these guys do? Defiant challenge as to attack from an ambush. Whichever they think more terrifying and tend their victim. As the dragon matures, the scales become large, hard, like metal. Most retain their bold orange color, some developing splotches of yellow. Hmm. Saliva evaporates, the sodium is exposed. Oh dear god, that sounds horrifying. I think my, my most terrifying dragon in real life I'd be sent against. Where's the link? Let me see if it did. Is probably the green dragon, though. Oh, yeah. Can I pull this up on stream, then? I don't want to pull it out without your permission, so I'll let you know. I, I did open it, though. I see this. Uh... Oh, yeah. Look at this guy. So this is your Hexblade, Warlocks, and Rogue. I'm digging it. He looks very fancy. He looks ready just as much for a party and a murder. <laughs> In my mind. I dig it. Very cool. I wish I had the artistic ability like this. Oh, another follow. You want to do a professor at the university? Perhaps. Thanks for following, Albert. 
Flamboyant Gentleman Jack. I definitely see it. I can I can kind of get the essence of this character. Is that a staff made out of bone? That definitely looks like it's made out of bone. That is a burrito gif. Basically, my DM ran Ravenloft for Tui. We got to 9th level, 19th level Paladin, and I still died at the end. But everyone else lived. Then we later moved to do more Ravenloft stuff, but in 5e... By my DM, if I could use my level 19 character as level 1... No, I do mean him. Who? Hmm. A reborn level one warlock. That sounds cool. Cane made of human leg bone. Oh, devious. Very devious. I dig this Ripper character. I, I give it a uh, 10 out of 10 in my eyes. Reborn being the race from the new Van Rickens book for 5e. Hoping to recreate those dragons in the fifth. However, I don't know uh, when that will happen. That's that's the curse of every DM is like I have an entire notes section on my phone where I write down all my ideas and I've done like half of them, right? Like, like I have a bunch of spells I want to cover and mess with and see if I can fix for different editions and fix for second edition. Um, I want to make a whole bunch of... Uh, homebrew content and more stuff for my homebrew world but it's all a lot see dr jack t ripper wasn't always jack in fact his name is make a roll of insight oh dear i want to find how to convert 3.5 psychonics and its powerpoint system to 5e that would be an endeavor i've seen a lot of weird stuff um I've the Koibu guys would talk about earlier. He does re re uh, recreations of necromancers where he has them run off of like life force, and that's a real wild thing. I don't think it'd work for anything but a solo campaign, which is what I like to try and do for solos. But uh, we'll see. Perception check quotes. Oh, Tui is a. I'm pretty decent with Tui. Um, I could take a look and try and cover the dragons in the future. Converting it to 5e is the problem. <laughs> I'm not as good with 5e. Magic system and go back to mana pool, like system for base, base mage and for psychonics. Yeah. The mana pool thing, um, I've seen people experiment with. It can either go really well or really poorly. And it all, it all depends on... Um, the edition obviously but what i'm familiar with is second edition and when they usually run the mana pool system what ends up happening is you either um have no spells because they're you know trying to recreate it in the same style of uh the spirit of second edition wizards being kind of like these weird weak but like glass cannony type guys who can like shoot a fireball and then they're almost useless right it can cause going Nova too much. Yes, going super... Or you go supersonic into the uh, the Space Force eventually. Just being able to kill anything. His name used to be Vincent A. Badger. <laughs> Turned into Jack T. Ripper. Yeah. So yeah, 0 AC would be the equivalent of 20. Um, 1 AC would be the equivalent of 19 AC in 5th edition. Um, then you go down, 18 AC would be 2. <laughs> and then eventually you get back to 10 again, and it all makes sense, but is crazily convoluted. What's your favorite spell not in 5e? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm probably going to answer based off a spell I just covered. Let me look and see. I don't want to click on that. I've been recently looking at chronomancy spells and minor paradox is a spell that is very broken because it lets you go back in time like five minutes and change something that happened or add an action before like combat that spells pretty cool but it's really shaky because if you don't talk it out with your dm every time you're going to run into some problems because you when you run into paradoxes like minor paradox you have a lot of issues Head surgeon for Her Royal Highness before the incident. Oh, God. The incident. 
Yeah, but that's probably my favorite Tui spell at the moment, but it shifts over time. Um, something I something I love about second edition spells, a lot of them are more permanent. Where like Walls of Iron needed to spell magic. Um, stuff like permanency like cripples your character. I don't know how I feel about the survival. One of the problems with Tui is there's a bunch of con rolls to see if you instantly die for spells like haste and permanency. I don't love that, but I love the idea of you physically weakening when you make magic items. I like that. That's cool. Breath of Life, that's yours. Let's take a look. Caught my attention. It's called Vengeful Gaze of God. I don't think it's in Tui, but it's my favorite Pathfinder spell, at least. Look at it. Like other spell to heal damage, Breath of Life can be... Ah, okay. It's like the Kiss of Life if you die. I see. It's interesting. Resurrection is a topic I struggle with a lot. I, I can never decide if I want my resurrection in my world or not. It's... Oh, it's so tough. You have to plan your campaigns around that kind of stuff. Would older spells be easier to move over? Um, yes and no. Um, I think there, if you compare it to 5e spells, you look at them and you go, okay, I just need to change damage for certain things. The problem gets to with stuff that's more permanent, like the Wall of Iron always being permanent. Um, I covered this weird spell... From the Al, I'm gonna mispronounce this, the Al Qadim uh, setting, where uh, you summon little blood, like uh, summons these little blood people that slide under doors and can hurt people. Changing the damage is easy, changing how much it affects the world is kind of hard. Then read the one note under the table. Let's look at it. Slain by death effects cannot be slain by Breath of Life. Deals damage to undead and can, cannot bring them back to life. Okay. There's a bunch of spells. The death, the, uh, the death spells are screw that one guy in particular. That's definitely a screw that one guy in particular spell. Imagine it. You are walking down the streets of London. You are tired and your phone is dead. Suddenly you see Shilla, a supply run for medicines and supply. When you stumble upon a cane of peculiar shape, you grab it and suddenly you are possessed, becoming Jack T. Ripper. Wahaha. The bones were Jack's and when possessed, he became the embodiment of Jack. All that, that's cool. So it's like a possession thing. It's an interesting turn for a character being possessed by a magic item. The way I like handling death in worlds depends on how high or low the magic world is. Yeah, for sure. I run particularly low magic in terms of accessibility, but high in terms of like scaling once you get up there. So if you get past level 5 as a wizard, um, you're like Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty, essentially, right? Which is how second edition tries to run itself, which it lends itself good if you want to do a weird solo project like I've been doing sometimes, where I did a solo conjure campaign with a buddy of mine, Teo, on my YouTube. But if you want to do parties, it scales poorly with parties, because then fighters become less relevant, and that's not very fair. For low magic, but I'll have some races that uh, do reincarnation when they die... But I don't mean like reincarnation spell. No, I mean proper full reincarnation cycle. That's a cool way to do it. So that's like the old, uh, not old Buddhist, but the Buddhist stuff. Where they uh, eventually come back and uh, don't have all their memories. Maybe they have like an essence of their past life. There's a lot of ways you could do reincarnation after they come back. Isn't there a magic item named uh, after the creator? It's a ring. Uh, there's a lot of rings named after the creators. Um, there's one in particular. It's like the Ring of Kaz or something like that. And it it has a bunch of magical effects. You can turn invisible and you, you have like other offensive and de defensive stuff you roll for on a table. 
but this ring essentially makes you into like a weird alien like creature your skin hardens and your ac your armor class goes up and uh you also you gain horns you you don't become like a tiefling you get like alien like elder lich kind of like weird astral horror type stuff it's kind of what you become that's one one magic item that i think of that's named after someone but uh there's a whole bunch that are named after people in the older editions. I don't know how much they do that in 5th. Because they probably have more oversight on uh, who gets to name things, and it's named for, like, marketability sometimes, rather than uh, what some old nerd wanted to name it when he was doing his D&D session and crafting an item. The biggest problem I have with some previous editions, 3.0 and 3.5 and Pathfinder 1E especially, is what is what many the christmas tree effect so let's use p for one for example okay let's hear it it's due to being the staff tie in so he's got it almost looks to me like uh you know a grayscale a little bit a little bit of grayscale there from uh a song of ice and fire or Game of Thrones, for those of you who don't like the books, but uh, I think the books are much better. Let's get working on this a little bit. Let's get ourselves... Oh, Floki, please don't lick me. Ow, that hurts. My cat is licking me. Show chat. So, show cat. Floki, do you want to... Floki's decided he wants to come on stream. Come over, buddy. They can't see you very well there. Okay, he's not going to like this. He's probably going to cry, but here's Floki. He's a big fluffy cat. He's named after Floki from the Vikings series. There's a subset of magical items known as the Big Six, those being headband that raises your mental attribute, magical belt that raises your physical scores, cloak that raises your saving throws, amulet, and ring that raises your AC. Okay. True. Very true. No, I do not know of which you speak. Yes, the grayscale. Um, you can Google it if you're... I, I'm not sure if you're actually unfamiliar, but uh, they... Uh, it's a disease in Game of Thrones that uh, gets all over your face and the rest of your body, and technically. Which most characters end up with those big six. Very true. Um, depends on the campaign. I like homebrew magic items that fuck with characters. So in my Fighter Thief campaign, I gave a player a belt that gives him one point of HP regeneration per hour, which isn't a lot, but it also makes him have troll-like features, so... Why don't more do DMs do things in other planes? Um, it's really tough. Other planes, can you can overcomplicate it and overplan. And a lot of the planar settings have ways to access other planes very quickly. And if you're not quick on having a DM screen full of stuff, it can overwhelm you. So I think that's usually the issue is overwhelming. Where like the medieval fantasy setting is simple. Um, it doesn't get too wild. I think it'd be cool to run a dimensionalist who travels the planes in a solo setting. That way you have real time and dedication with another player to get through it. That might be something I'd do in the future, although I've also been hankering for a chronomancer solo with one of my friends. Yes, Floki's very cute. Your video works? That's great. So reasons it's a problem is magical items feel less magical, really. Very true. Less wondrous. When are the big six? And the most of those items are called wondrous items. Yeah. When everything is standard, nothing is special, right? So, uh, throwing monkey wrenches into magic items can make it feel interesting and new. Although, it's hard for some DMs, because, you know, you're crunched for time, depending on how many games you're running and things like that. So you end up just pulling off of similar tables and standard items that you're used to. 
There's uh, wasn't there a few seven legendary wings for wizards? Oh, there's a whole bunch of magic rings. I like my femme son. He was to make, he was fun to make. I always wanted to do a planar adventure. Never done a solo. Yeah, solo DMing is kind of it's difficult craft to figure out. It takes a lot of thought into balancing hit dice. I know in, in fifth edition they have challenge ratings. But in second, you have to kind of get a feel for how hit dice measures with spell abilities and then balance it that way. Uh, solos also require you to have a decent repertoire with the player. But they're on my channel if you want to check them out. Um, sometimes they're a little slow, sometimes they're a little faster. Uh, it's less jovial, I'd say, for the most part. Except for the ones between me and Nahome. But me and Nahome have been friends for like six or seven years now, so... Just test him out and look at the gist of his capabilities. I'd always suggest taste, uh, testing them out on kobolds. Kobolds are my favorite uh, experimental monster to see how magic items perform against them. They're just so squishy. Yeah. It's a Pokemon 5e game? That sounds interesting. Yeah, it does depend on the genre. I think, I think personally, um, like I have one with my buddy Teo, or we had one, uh, where he was a conjurer. That's over now. We got like six or seven sessions deep, uh, and things went astray, but, uh, it's straight in game, not out of game. But we had some fun times and he was trying to build up. I like how you can really focus down on one character and get a whole bunch of, uh, lore in your world through that one character. Oh yeah, for sure. A solo one-shot for April Fools. Get a little wacky and wild with that one, for sure. That kind of one. Sadly, I'm in a DM burnout mode, but I really want to try solo eventually. Yeah, burning out is one of the biggest issues with performing a game, right? Because you're just like, you're always wanting to do it. But then it's like, you get to a point where either you're running so many games or you've been running a game so long where either your creative ideas just kaput for a little bit or you end up having real life responsibilities. That's usually mine is the real life responsibilities like totally crush me. I'm kind of player burnout mode myself, which is weird. I'm fine as a DM, but as a player, ugh. <laughs> yeah, it can get that way. I especially got that way when I was, uh, when I was a player just kind of roaming roll 20 is that uh, so many failed sessions, I get tired. And that can happen a lot on Roll20 when you're just kind of finding random people to do stuff with. You don't know them. You don't know what to expect. I'm just going to do a bunch of walls here. Not because I'm going to keep them, but because I want to structure myself. Just do... Oh, goodness. I mean, it's not even failed sessions. It's that I've been gaming with the same group for almost five years. Oh, my lord. If I could keep a group together for five years, I'd do it. But I uh, recently was in college. I am now graduated with a bachelor's degree. And I just, like, during that experience, during my... I was helping to teach a class my last year. Um, and that totally wiped my, like, free time. Planning for lectures to actually give them is a lot of stress. My ideas kind of went kaput. Oh, I've felt that before. Where you plan out something really elaborate and players just do not take to it or you run out of ideas in the tank. It's... Then you're just like, Ugh, can't do it anymore. Two days a week? Oh my lord. That's a lot of DMing with the same group. The D&D the at the uni will not last forever, unfortunately. Um... I think that'll that's that that session uh, not session that campaign will probably go on at least for 16. We'll see if we need a little more, a little less. But uh, I have a graduation plan for all of you, okay? At our magic university. Okay, so it looks like down here we have our ladder. Okay, so we need two staircases. Let's just start out with that, and they're parallel to each other, which makes this easy. 
I will live in that uni for life. The new character at the same uni. See, that's the fun part about D&D &D, is that I love incorporating, or this is one of the fun parts, I love incorporating old characters like Titus is a buffalo riding uh, paladin, not paladin, cleric, uh, multi-class warrior in my world who my friend Tom played and he's been a staple of a lot of stuff since. But um, I love including old characters. So like even if your character's gone in the sense that we don't play them anymore, they still had an impact on the world, and they're still... It's persistent. That's a, a big thing about D&D that I like. I think this is roughly even. Ooh. I may need to tap out in the next hour. I've got spicy bubble guts got diarrhea. Okay. <laughs> a little personal information there. A little personal business going on. I hope you're doing all right, though. I don't want you to suffer through that. Let's get these. These are both coming. Oh, no. We only need one staircase, actually. Pump this out. You'd like to play the ice riding diplomat? That might be fun. Could fit in a solo session one of these days if you want to see where she's at. Ooh, this needs to go under. We'll fix that in a minute. I have this over here. We begin to actually map again. We had a lot of conversation going on, which I appreciate. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, make sure to check out the YouTube and stuff too. It's always a good time. Love having interesting ideas. If you ever want to bring ideas or anything like that to me or talk about stuff, we can. You've made me want to go through, and Enforcer has, you made me want to go through and read old, some old D&D &D stuff. Yeah. I want to go look at some of the Dragon Magazine stuff and talk about it. Talk about what works and what doesn't. Eternal 6 for D&D 3E and Pathfinder. Rules of it are interesting where characters max out at level 6 and any time they get enough XP to level up again, they instead get a new feat. Sounds like an interesting system. These are technically upward stairs, but I don't have anything better. No, we need below. As long as the feats scale interestingly, that could be very cool. I realized that I make a bunch of female characters never wanted to make guys, lol. Yeah. You know, we all have our preference for what uh, gender or race we want to play. Try and prevent martial and caster disparity. Ah, I see. Yeah. That is the thing. There's... That's always been the issue in most uh, fantasy settings, is caster versus fighter uh, leveling or warrior, you know, rogue, that kind of business. Rogues are some of the hardest to balance, I think, because um, party utility is hard to quantify, and it's really a DM uh, question rather than a setting one sometimes, where you have to kind of plan around making sure the rogue is always useful. Let's see here. Hope you guys enjoy the music choice or can hear the music enough. Should be kind of silent, but just enough to hear, but who knows? I never know with the settings and things like that. I'm gonna wrap up this map and then I'm probably gonna go in about 30 minutes because my jaw is starting to hurt. I have TMJ, I think it's called. My jaw acts up pretty badly after a while. But I'll be back with more mapping every couple days or so. Try and keep to it. Let's see, cobbled stone. Let's, let's axe all of this stuff. Why isn't this disappearing? I have to edge it away now. Can you do the dragons first with magazine review? Uh, I can look through that later this week. I have to paw through it a little bit on my own and see what I come back with. 
but I can definitely keep that on my schedule for the classes. I always like, um, I like pirates as a player character. Um, so what I generally like to do is run a, um, either a warrior, multi-class thief, or just a thief who is like pirate-esque. Even if we're on the land setting, he's found some way to become a part of the party. And after that, um, there's also, you know, the old classic magic pirate and things like that you can do. Um, but a solid cutlass, a pirate hat, and... The dreams of gold and plunder are what uh, drive me as a character, generally, if I'm non-magical. Or a wizard. I like it, 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 enigmatic, enigmatic wizards who are kind of like quiet and puzzling to themselves constantly and will come out with a, a, a brilliant idea, although that's hard to roleplay because, um, you know, coming up with more than one brilliant idea is very difficult, but uh, trying to play that character has always inspired me. Example of disparity, okay. Level 20 fighter is naked and bathing, gets suddenly jumped and attacked by 12. Level 10, aka, yeah, CR 16, fight something designed to be fought. Level 4 is 16, so he should be fine. If he had gear, uh, he had his gear, he loses. But in the same situation, a level 20 sorcerer, again, naked in a bath. Oh, look, the sorcerer wins, yeah. That's the thing, right, is that uh, you become more able. Second edition tries to balance that out by making sure you have to always have your spell components, and if you uh, don't memorize the right spell on a particular day, then you don't have it right, um, where other systems don't always do that with wizards. But sorcerers always have those spells, right? So their, their toolbox is limited, but they're combat effective almost always. And that, that's a problem um, with the fifth edition sorcerer, is you don't have a way to deal with that as much. But it's not unworkable. Doesn't allow multi-class? Aw. To each DM their own, but, uh, you know. We all have our preferences. Multi-class is very fun, though. I like, um, uh, it causes issues with leveling, obviously, but, uh... I think I should be able to read a book midway through the day and change my spells. Uh, it's a tough one. For second edition, the rules would say no, but the DM is flustered with the rules sometimes. And it's meant to it's meant to balance out. There's a reason for it. It's not arbitrary. It's meant to balance out wizards and whatnot. In fifth edition, they make resting much easier and stuff like that, but at least short rest, which you have arcane recovery and things like that that allow you to get spells back as a wizard, and it's just it's a little funky, but uh, it's not too bad. What are we doing here? This room doesn't make a lot of sense. You know what? Yes, it does. Because what this is is one. This is going to be the porta potty, essentially. Crazy because I can short rest now every time they run out of spells. Let's do, this is gonna be like a spare guest room. We'll fix that in a minute. I don't love this long hallway. I think we'll actually delete that wall. Some cobbled stone. Devolve into Eldritch Blast walking turret. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I feel about cantrips in 5e. Second edition doesn't do spells like that. And it really limits wizards in 2nd edition, where they become very, very destructive in, like, an instant, but then they're done, right? Um, and that's cool, but obviously a player wants to always be active, so finding a way to deal with that's difficult. Still trying to figure out what new character I was going to make. Hmm. There's the classic en en enigmatic caster. You could run that. I don't know how you love that, but... Uh... I also don't know your party composition that you're looking to work with.
I mean, the character could just be uh, not the best. They could be a really good person, but a terrible parent, right? Uh, perhaps if you're good alignment, you're working so hard to change the world that you forget about your family, right? And uh, you could be any class doing that, perceivably, but, uh, you know, and maybe you're getting praise constantly all around you for doing this, too, and you're being reinforced by the society around you to continue doing your adventures, but your children are begging you to come home. That could be the two sides of the coin your character's dealing with. That's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about that kind of thing. Just for backstory. Yeah. Top of the keep. Well, we're gonna need windows all over here. Run a wall down this way. Why isn't this working? Oh, because we're using cobblestone. We need the stone wall. Oh dear, and we used the wrong thing. I am thoroughly distracted, which is a good thing, because I love that we have people in the chat to chat with. I haven't tried streaming in a while, but I think I'll start doing it more often, since uh, we got a good response here. Love having y'all around. I just put a devil who can cast fireball in a maze with 10 feet wide hallways. <laughs> oh, God. GG party. GG. You're all on fire now. You have to think about it. Uh, you could also... Hmm. I'm trying to be helpful. Let's think here. Let's scout out some rooms here. Yes. They can shoot fireball at their feet. Although, if you have an invoker in the party, I think they have an ability... Where they could do the same with a limited number of people. We run this over here. We go hallway going here. Maybe do like a games room or something. Let's clear this out. Non stereotype. Um. A rogue who cares about their family rather than gold is obviously a little um, less than typical. Of course, there are noble rogues out there all the time, but less typical than the, like, I'm a thief, I want money. Wizards are a lot of work. Depending on the DM and how generous they are with you knowing your spells as well, that can change the dynamic. Get like a two system thing here going. Get some rooms. This is definitely going to be the master bedroom over here. It's going to be like a spare room for guests. Probably just a variety of rooms in here. I don't love this, but I'm trying to get something usable and that I don't spend years on. Get some doors going. Maybe a wizard who's leaving home is looking to, like, gather their library of magic, or they're looking to find an artifact that they know uh, will hurt their family in the future. Maybe, uh, maybe one of your family members is sick and needs a cure to something, and you're searching for the cure in your adventures, um, but you also need money, obviously, to fund your research for the cure whole bunch of ideas that can work with that. Throwing down our doors. Played a ranger, wizard, monk, sorcerer, warlock, artificer, and was so thinking something different. Blood hunter. Blood hunters are cool. Very interesting class. There's also the classic fighter. And you can make a lot out of a fighter if you want to. Uh, it has to be from the official book. <laughs> I, I, you could always you could run a, a cleric that the god is calling them to to battle right and uh, 
they want you to go on these quests and do these things for them, but uh, you're, like, torn between your family and that, or maybe your family's even encouraging, and it's, you know, maybe your family is just as religious as you as a cleric, and they uh, want you to go off, but it's it's tough, you know? It's a tough world. Push through here. Okay, let's get some windows. Haven't decided what all these will be. I like the Cookie Kiter fighter, fighter characters. They are underrated. They are also adaptable to many different settings. Very true. Fighters are the uh, blood of D&D. &D. The lifeblood? The lifeline? Something like that. Let's get some nice windows in here. Provide some light during the day. Arcane Archer seems fun. Cleric could be fun, too. A lot of fun with it myself. I'll be starting at level 8. Team Mind Pace Games, the two pre-written ones. I'm not super familiar with Arcane Archer. If you guys want to enlighten me, I wouldn't be against it. Just with some quick introduction to what it might do. Very curious. I get the gist by the name a little bit, but uh, like, what are their special abilities, you know? What do they do? So I throw in various windows here. I don't know how much I love this upstairs. It seems a little bit like I'm focused on other things, but we'll live with it. Get a desk over in this room. This is going to be his main bedroom. He's definitely going to have a desk in there. Let's find a, a nice rug. Yeah. You enter, you have a nice rug there, you know. Has that in his room. It's actually... You know what? You would have not carpeting. But this is the top floor. I think we might go with wooden floors for the top floor. Just for some lighter construction. Swoosh this over here. They're a variant of the fighter that gets arcane arrow shots they can use, a variety they can choose from as they get higher and lower, uh, level gain the variety of character building. Click on the link here. So do they have, like, they can shoot, like, fire, probably fire arrows and different stuff like that. Elven tradition, you can choose to gain proficiency in either arcane or nature skill. Okay. Prestidigitation. One shot can be an area of effect burst. Okay. Auto hit a target they've seen in the past minute. Ooh. So it's like an archer with special magical effects. I like the idea of an arcane archer who is an arcane archer because their bow is like just mildly magical. Like it's a talking magic bow that doesn't have a lot of like bonuses to hit, but... Uh, is like their lifelong companion. I love magical talking items. It's it's one of my favorite things. I'm not gonna lie. Even if they're not that powerful, I'd rather have a magic item that I can consult on things, and help me uh, know that I'm I'm not alone. Of course, you usually have a party, but yes you are aware of barnabas the magic talking hammer that desk is really small i just noticed that we're gonna have to up that size really tiny desk barnabas our magic talking crafting hammer doesn't provide any bonuses to the player character i have on but it crafts things better does hearthy count as a magic item i'll let you figure that one out i won't spoil it hearthy is a talking fireplace I 
already you can tell just from people who've seen my campaigns that I put a lot of talking magic items in. I had a fun magical item for one of my games. Let's hang on and I'll go find it. All right. I'll chill. Chill for a sec. Is the chat big enough, guys? Can you see enough of it? There we go. Okay, top floors are wooden. You can still see stone walls, but the wooden floors do it for me. Usually you wouldn't have stone walls at the top. Just not practical. They're stone floors. At least in my mind. Let's bump this up a little bit. Get it nice and solid desk. There we go. I don't love how it's clipping over the wall. Let's get it under. Please just click that. He doesn't return. Chat's good. Okay, dope. Thanks for letting me know. This is a sentinel weapon that can speak with you and possibly even possess you if you fail a save. Oh, there's a bunch of those in second second edition who f just totally screw with you. Don't worry. I can wait. I don't love these beds. Let's go find fancy beds. Here we go. Oh, I love these. I love this DLC. Uh, not DLC, the uh, mod I installed for this. Let's give it a nice... Not this big. Nice big, like king size bed in this room where the, the lord of this keep will just chill and relax. Is there a better desk in here? Don't see it. All this is doing is making me crave playing DD again and remembering old settings I thought were interesting. I hope so. Um, one of the points of my YouTube and Twitch are to inspire. Um, that's why I put Imagination Inspiration as my banner on my YouTube. Could I use a crossbow with Arcane Archer? That is not a question for me to answer, but it, I feel like a good, a decent DM would let you, to be honest. It seems to fit very well. Here we go. Let's click on this link. Okay, we'll drag this over since we're looking at it. Infuses Mucro, major artifact. Ego 33, empathy, okay. Spell immunity, special defend the servants in interest of Asmodeus. Fire immunity, the ability to cast repulsion. Yeah, always ask your DM. Plus three, speed, longsword, Oh my lord. Sheathed in the submerged corpse chest cavity for 200 given to the my agent of Asmodeus in return for the warlords. Oh, a long dead high priest of Asmodeus. Oop. No iTunes, go away. State of Marcy, at which the point of its intelligence are unavailable and it functions as nothing more than a plus three speed longsword. In the Bath of Asmodeus Tears. The one thing I love about magic items is the weird ways you destroy them. I'm probably, I'm going to do a stream soon. Where we just talk about, and we'll probably have, we'll try and put something interesting on the screen. Dim would let me make a half-orc, kind of like the idea of pissed off half-orc mom fighting for kids. I love that idea too. You should definitely ask your DM about that. But like, there's here, I'll just, I'll go to a random page. So, the seal of Jafar al-Samal, you destroy it. Uh, the seal must be carried by a tortoise to every sh shrine in Zakara and blessed by a, mor a moralist priest at each one. That's one way to destroy this jar. The next is the seal must be cleansed with the breath of a soul, softened in the water of life, heated with a spark of the sun, and opened <laughs> with a mountain's heart. What the fuck does that mean? I don't even know, but it's cool. The seal must be placed at the brow of the forgotten god. That's just one of these items. Like, these items are wild and wacky in this book of the artifacts. Um, they're all old and from various different settings. That one's from, not. it's not called Zakar, it's like Al-Quid or something. But there's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> 
like this one, the, the Psychometron of Narad, cause an Earth Drake to devour it, or you could get it destroyed by letting no light touch it for 99 years. Like, how that's useful to a campaign, very rarely it will be, but like, it's dope, right? It's cool information, it's cool lore on these items, how to destroy them. And I just thought of that, because in yours was the destruction. To destroy the weapon, you must immerse it in the bath of Asmodeus' tears. That's one of the cool fucking things, right? This item, right, it's a cool item on itself, but what makes it, like, makes me, like, wonder about it, wonder more is that destruction thing and that's just that's something that gets me i don't know if it gets you guys but i just love it i like that that's it's very cool my dude very cool little dark star i dig it hardcore a nice sofa so that when he has company right this guy he's gonna he's gonna have a nice sofa because he's very wealthy but that's most of his room i think we have some upstairs storage i think this is the storage room upstairs you know, servants aren't going always, you know, they need sometimes. Oh, that's too big. Half orc mama. Uh, you could do a half orc. I think a half orc mama could definitely be a berserker. Uh, class wise. Other ideas. Let's just get some crates. Super flying boat. The way you destroy it is you have to know the location of the nearest black hole and then you get yourself and the flying boat into the black hole. You see, that's just dope. Then that becomes like a, a plot point in the campaign is having to find a black hole to destroy the magic flying boat for whatever reason you need to destroy it. I think actually one of the, this room, the small room will be like a study slash library. I'm liking that idea. Nice bookshelves. Get a nice big reading chair. I wish I had more sconces available. It got me thinking earlier when one of you said it. I just, ugh. I want sconces. I have to look on the DLC, not the DLC, the mod packs and see if they're there. Other ideas for the orc mama. Let's think here. There's a lot you could try. Then sometimes they that aren't able to be destroyed but can only be made dormant like the skull staff yeah so that you can never get rid of it but you can make it dormant so you have to reactivate it so it's less of a threat to the world there we go that's our library library I used to love saying library no fireplace in there we'll do another rug but we'll do a different rug this ugly little rug of sin. There we go. These others will just have beds. Less fancy beds. Don't think this guy has any children. Could go work mother shaman. True. True. Very true. Her duties to her tribe require her to go adventure. The Skull Soul is basically a truly immortal demi-lich that obeys unearingly the commands of whoever bonds with the item. Ooh. Let's get some beds in here. This is like the guest bedroom slash where the guards will sleep generally if they can deal with it. And that's all that is. And then I think we're almost set. We need to think of some purpose for this main room. This is the toilet. We'll just put like a... No. This is just a bucket everyone goes poops in during the night. Not even a door. No door on the toilet. This is college dorm style. And I think we'll build him a nice sitting room out here. Tragic past events separated her from her tribe. Her dark visions die drove her away from children. I got a text. Eh. 
shaman can be a stereotypical uh, kind of setting. Let's get some chairs to look out the window here. Be the first thing we do with this room. A dwarf and an orc seems kind of wild. Um, I don't know what your DM will allow, but there's like all kinds of wild. You could go tiefling with an orc, stuff like that. See you, Darkstar. Hope to see you again soon, but uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Ooh, let's get some benches. This is kind of where the upper echelons will hang out up here. Just outside the bedroom, this is like the private, like, hey, come hang out, guys. And these are almost unnecessary numbers of benches, but we'll live with it. I'm actually probably going to end soon, guys. Let's think. Orc, mother, what other things could we have? Ogre and an orc's co or troll and an orc. Very true. Probably more reason for a lot of those races to intermingle depending on the setting you're in. Although orcs have become more mainstream than they used to be in terms of D&D settings. Orcs used to be, like, very, very ugly. Uh, let me grab old depictions of orcs. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but, like, if you want to get super special, you could go old school orc in terms of visuality. So this is what orcs used to look like, right, in first edition. This is the art for first edition orcs. Orcs in Warhammer are the most sexy. They're definitely the most bulky. But uh, first edition orcs look like this. And... You know, we can look at, like, the typical depiction of a 5e orc. Let's just find something. Yeah, gross, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, here's, here's, like, some of the... I think this is from the Monsters Man. But then we have these, right? Like, look at the difference. Like, my god. What... How have we changed? It does look like Alf, doesn't it? That is not a fuckable orc. You're very, very correct. Yeah, orc wizards. Yeah, or in second edition, especially orc wizards are very discouraged. <laughs> I been I I like to homebrew out some of those rules and change class limits and give human stat attributes and things like that in second, because um, it's a little wonky. It's built around the idea that oh my green screen is falling. I think it's I think I need to fix my green screen and uh, go eat some breakfast as well very soon. We're gonna finish up our map very quickly. Okay. Like, oh god, why? Yeah. Uh they're they're not the most pleasant to look at. We'll give it a fireplace up here somewhere. Nice cozy corner fireplace. How about we do that? And then chairs can be moved around, obviously. Oh, I don't know how that looks. Our kitchen fireplace is actually somewhere over here. I kinda wanna match that. I think it's right around here. Orcs in a lot of races have become far more humanized. Very, very true. They have tried to make them more human, more understandable and empathetic, whereas they used to be very much evil. So there's our fireplace. I'm feeling about okay with this. There's a lot of empty spaces up here. Um, might come back to it in the future, but I like this map so far. Um, fuckable orc. I'm afraid to click on that link. Oh, God. It's like super zoomed in. I'm gonna have to not see it. I'm gonna post it in your Discord to open it. Oh, okay, there we go. Now I see it. I can't pull that on the stream. Let's see if this will work better. No, it's it's Discord is opening it very big. Well, if you guys want, you can click on it. That is a very uh, attractive looking orc comparatively what they used to look like. 
Um, but I think we're wrapping up for today. We had a lot of cool conversations. Stayed on here for two hours. It was dope. It was fun. Um, come around again, though, guys. Um, you can talk about all manner of D&D stuff. I hope your orc mother works well. Your half-orc mother. Oh, God. No home's here now. Perfect time. <laughs> Perfect time to end. I need to get on schedule. I thought of a gnome in an orc. Oh, God. That has some weird implications, but uh, could work out. Oh, dear Lord. The horror. The humanity. Definitely have to come up with a weird backstory for that one. It is not stereotypical. Me and Nahum had an interesting con conversation about if giants and uh, gnomes could have kids. And I'm like, oh, I don't even want to approach that one. It's like fucking a hamster. Oh, dear God. But uh, uh, this is our top. This is our top level. And then we have our bottom level down here. This one clearly has more uh, stone still in it. Uh, but I'm liking our, our little keep we built today. We built a keep. We had some cool conversations about additions of D&D, &D, classes, and things like that. Um, the degeneracy starts. And as the degeneracy starts, I'm fading away. Uh, we were around for two hours, so I consider that a success. We had some really cool conversations. If you have more questions and things, feel free to comment on YouTube or... Uh, you know, whisper to me on here or join my Discord, although it's not a super active Discord. I have all my weird spell cards and things in there. All manner of other things. Um, I enjoyed the stream, though. Y'all seem pretty chill, pretty cool. So, uh, yes, also join Nell's Discord. If you want to pop your Discord link in the chat now, I'll stay live for a couple more seconds. It's a cool Hangout Discord. <laughs> Gotta follow. Thanks, Corlex. You've been around for a while here today. Thanks for following, my homie. It's very kind of you. Hope you'll join around. Thinking wizard. Yeah. But uh, if you guys want to see me soon, I'd be open to streaming again, and I hope you join us. I hope you refine that concept. A wizard orc who is half gnome is very unstereotypical. Um... I can't remember what Gian Nightshade was in home if you're still around, but he had a he had a half gnome, maybe half human wizard, which was pretty interesting um, in itself. Who eventually became part Modron. Modron? I can't pronounce the word, but the Planescape setting little like not robot people, but they look like robots. But with that being said, uh, go check our stuff out on YouTube. We have plenty of campaigns and spell stuff uh, for our short content. Um, we also have campaign shorts. Here, I'll, I'll shoot a link to the all the stuff. Let me just do that before I sign off. Trying to be a good plugger or whatever they call it these days. These are some links here. Let me find my chat again. Oh god, where did you all go? Yes, good dirty. Good she's she's rewarding me for uh doing good things here's our spell stuff where i describe old D, D spells for short content and then here's our best moments of our D, D campaign stuff um pretty fun small watch if you uh have some limited free time there's campaigns on there too but i won't link those just now uh, oh my god you're linking my link tree thanks buddy oh dear yeah there's all the links um, feel free to join us next time. I'll try and stream around this time, um, probably between like five and eight, uh, every couple days here. So be on the lookout around those times. I might stream later if I get a whimsy, uh, might also stream the D&D campaigns, although I tend to record them. Uh, also Fridays at, um, 8 p.m. EST, we do D&D with Kiyosan on his channel. Let me link that here. I do it without here you go. Kiyosan AU. At Fridays at 8 p.m. EST, we run uh, his Baz uh, the Paladin. The episodes are on my channel, though. Um, join us next time, though, for our stream. I'll try and make a schedule, although Nell knows I'm not very good at schedules. So uh, we'll see you next time, though. I enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I don't think uh, our Dark Star friend here is still here, but I do think. Corlix and uh, Enforcer are here still, so thanks for joining us, guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. You're gonna do it whether you like it or not?
Oh my lord. All right. See ya, homie. Hope you good luck with your D&D stuff. As always, uh, I've been Dirty Dungeon, and uh, now I have to hit the end stream button. As much as I hate to do it, I am hungry and need to do things today. So.